Hello everyone, I am Dr. Swarab Dikshit and today I have got a very interesting case for you. It's a case of venous insufficiency. So when we talk about chronic venous insufficiency, what do we mean by chronic venous insufficiency? It is either the defect with the superficial venous system or the defect with the deep venous system and it leads to variety of symptoms. Now what could be these symptoms? This could start with a cosmetically unacceptable changes over the superficial skin where you have dilated veins or you might have minor thread veins or there may be edema, there may be ulcers, there may be pigmentation. So students, today I have brought a very interesting case and this is a case of varicose vein. So I will show you a case of varicose vein. Just show either se dekho. These are all dilated vein and this is a classical SSV, short saphenous vein ter territory incompetency. So let us try to evaluate these things. What are the changes that you can see here? Can you see these? These are known as telangiectasias. These are known as telangiectasias or they may also be classified into the spider veins. So this is all present all over the limb. So it is there on this side also. It is there on the left side also. So let me tell you <coughs> what is the criteria for telangiectasia, what is the criteria for reticular veins and what is the criteria for varicose vein. Now whenever we talk about the venous diameter, it is very important. Less than 1 mm, this is what is classified as the spider vein or telangiectasia. 1 to 3 mm, reticular vein. More than 3 mm, it's a varicose vein. So not only diameter is important, the classical terminology that we use for varicose vein is dilated cosmetically unacceptable vein. And here if you see, this is tortuous, dilated, cosmetically unacceptable. And this is what is a classical just show it from this side. This is a classical, classical varicosity. Along with this, remember whenever we talk about the ulcer, what is the location? So this is malleolus, medial malleolus and 10 centimeter above this, this is known as a gator zone. So what do you mean by gator? It refers to an ancient terminology where the Roman soldiers used to wear an open socks. So as a point of identification, that was an open socks worn above the ankle. So this location is what is a gator zone and normally this is the place where you have the maximum traffic jam. So due to this there is ulceration here, edema here and pigmentation. Majority of the changes happen here. So varicose ulcers if they are present they would be always located 5 to 10 centimeter above the medial malleolus. So this is what is very important. Now students as, an, as a student what are the important things that you should be knowing? Whenever you see a patient getting to your, coming to your OPD or to the hospital with the such kinds of, you can say, presentation, the next thing is to grade them. And for grading, we have a classification which is known as C. So C stands for the clinical presentation, E stands for the etiology, A stands for the anatomy and P stands for pathophysiology. Now when we talk about C, it is C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. Now varying from what you get, so C1 is your reticular veins and telangiectasia, C2 is your varicose vein, C3 is your edema, C4 means the pigmentation and the skin changes or there may be something like lipodermatosclerosis, LDS. Now what is LDS? Zone of fibrosis over this area. So what happened? Here there is fibrosis and here there is compensatory increase in size of the calf. When you talk about the compensatory increase in size of the calf, with narrowing here, this is what is known as a classical champagne bottle leg. So champagne bottle leg happens why? Because the calf muscle is responsible for the pumping action. So this calf muscle undergoes a hypertrophy. So here there is hypertrophy and here there is narrowing. So this gives you an inverted champagne bottle leg and this is what is lipodermatosclerosis. Then C5 is a healed ulcer, C6 is a non-healing ulcer. From students and examinations perspective, this is what is must know. Then when we talk about etiology, it is very important. So in this case, what are you seeing? You are seeing C1 also and C2 also. Edema is not there. Etiology, it could be by birth. So it is easy. A is when we talk about the uh, etiology, there could be, it could be primary. <coughs> so I will ask this patient. Maji, ye aapko kap se shuru hua tha? Ye aapko? Ye maana pere bachsa peet pada kata, jo hoya kata, phir khatam hoya. Bachpan se tu nahi tha? Nahi. Okay. Can you see, can you listen to this history? It's post-pregnancy. This is post-pregnancy. So this is E secondary. So it is secondary to some cause. So ES, EP and EC. Then anatomy. 
A D stands for a deep venous system problem. So probably this patient is not having a deep venous system problem. However, clinically we cannot rule it out until unless we have a Doppler study with us. We will get the Doppler done for you very soon. Now try to understand this is a defect of the superficial venous system. So A stands for S. Now we also have to check whether or no perforator incompetency is there or no. For perforator incompetency, we have a lot of tests and one of them is a Fegan's test. When we talk about Fegan's test, what is Fegan's test? Can you see there are depressions, the spitting, the spitting on assessment. So you can feel the facial pitting, the facial pitting and these are the perforators. So this is where the perforator incompetency is there. So yes, the superficial venous system is also involved and perforator system is also involved. Then when we talk about the P, pathophysiology, what is very, very, very important in context with P? It could be either due to reflux. So here the problem is with perforators clinically what it is. So yes, I would say it is PR. And if it is a post DVT, there may be an obstructive column. So these, this is what is a SEEP classification. Now how we evaluate this patient, one very important thing that we require is a Doppler study. Apart from the clinical correlation, we require a Doppler study. Then when we talk about the clinical assessment, there are a variety of tests that we can do. Now this is a superficial venous system. So we have to check that here. Can you see if we trace the vein, this is the SPJ. What is SPJ? Sepino popliteal junction. Now if it would have been a problem of the superficial venous system like GSV, the vein would entirely go along the medial aspect of the leg as well as the thigh directly draining into the sepino femoral junction. So this is actually a varicosity of the short saphenous vein and thus we will be looking for SFJ and SFPJ incompetency or competency on Doppler but as of clinically you know that you have to look for the site of the dilated vein. So if it is along the medial aspect of thigh and leg it is S uh, GSV. If it is along the posterior aspect of the leg, so this is the posterior aspect of the leg. It is also giving you a history that there is a groin, you can say sensation at the level of groin also. So what does that mean? This is actually SFJ and SPJ, both perforators are incompetent. But right now, we cannot appreciate a dilated vein along this aspect. But one more thing that we need to understand here, there is one more thing that there may be sometimes a vein dilated, a vein may be dilated and located over the anteromedial aspect of the thigh, anterolateral to medial and this is where we have the accessory vein incompetency. Can you see the patient herself? So what is this? Here I cannot, because of the privacy issues, I cannot expose this right now in bedside clinics we do do. So remember, Patient said, patient ne aapne kya bata hai, yahan par bhi fula hua hai. Mm. Yeah. So what does that mean? Varicosity at the level of groin. What is that known as? You can comment in the comment sections below. It is known as Safina Varix. So basically we need to evaluate the complete venous system along with you can say arterial system also as a you can say collateral study. But yes, venous system, superficial and deep both are to be evaluated. Now when we talk about the classical test that we do, a bedside test that we can do is First, we will allow the vein to get emptied. Aap ek bar let jaiye, maaje, ek bar aap let jaiye. In order to test SFJ and SPJ incompetency, one classical test is Trendelenburg test. We have Trendelenburg 1, where we tie a tunicate or occlude the SFJ with the thumb and then allow the, you can say, the patient to stand. The moment the patient stand, the vein, if it refills, that means it, and, and we release, actually we release the uh, occlusion. If it is filling from top to bottom, it's a SFJ or SPJ incompetency. If without, you can say if you don't release and still the vein is filling, that means it's a perforator incompetency, which is seen. So how do we do a Trendelenburg test? Try to understand. I will elevate the limb and I will milk the veins out. I will milk all the veins. I will milk the veins. Now you can say the vein has actually, the vein has actually collapsed. The vein has actually collapsed. Now since the patient has given me a clinical history that yes, it's a problem at the level of groin. So what I will do, I will use a tunicate. So this is a bigger tunicate that I will use it for the thigh. Yeah, so just below the SPJ, SFJ, I will tie this out. And now, yeah, I have occluded it. I will ask my patient to stand. And once the patient stands, I will relieve it. Aye, maji, aap khade ho jaye. 
I will relieve this obstruction. I have released this. So can you see? The vein is again dilated again. So the vein which was empty now is again dilated. So that shows that shows that yes, there is incompetency of SFJ also. For the other test we have, we have the Pratt's test, that is, uh, we have the Schwartz test, we have the Perthes test. In Perthes test, we don't allow the you can say compression to be released. So we use a, a, a Schmarz compression bandage and ask the patient to walk. There's a busting pain experience. So this is again very, very, very important. Apart from that, we have a Morrissey's, we have a Morrissey's cuff impulse test where we will ask the patient to give a cuff and we can feel that impulse over the, you can say, SFJ. So there are a lot of tests, but yes, the ideal evaluation of this patient is a Doppler study. And I have planned this patient at my hospital for Evla. So we will be going for endovenous laser ablation. Students, when we talk about endovenous laser ablation, we will do a radiographic assessment. So ultrasonic assessment of this vein, we will mark the territory, use a tumescent anesthesia and enter it with a what you can say a radio fiber, laser fiber and then we will set the laser on. So I will show that video in a different session and that will be a different thing. As far as when we talk about the, you can say the telangiectasias, one very important thing that we require for them is injection sclerotherapy. Now what is injection sclerotherapy? It's an ideal sclerosin which will obliterate the vein lumen and it will require one very important thing that the vein criteria. So sclerotherapy or sclerosins are not utilized for the varicose vein. So we have a Trendelenburg surgery. What's a Trendelenburg surgery? In Trendelenburg surgery, what we will do we will make an incision here, we will ligate the cephenofemoral junction and we will strip the vein from here to here. With a May Kastner stripper, we will strip it off. Nowadays, that is not practice. So we have a Trendelenburg surgery, we have a thermal ablation where we have radio frequency and Evla and apart from that, we have injection sclerotherapy. Nowadays, we have endovenous glue also one time. It's a one time disposable machine, very costly, but yes, it is also popular now. And for perforator, we have three things. We have the stab avulsion of the perforator. Then we have a trivex that is a motorized phlebectomy. And yes, we can go for seps also. What is seps? Subfacial endoscopic perforator surgery. So these are the basic things that you actually learn. In the second part of the video, I shall get a surgery for you. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you for watching me. Do subscribe and share the link of the video with your near and dear ones so that you also learn a lot about the varicose vein and chronic venous insufficiency. Thank you.